So for today's project, we are going to be replacing the Wi-Fi card in my Dell Inspiron 15 model 7569 laptop. If you've watched my after the unboxing video I published recently, you've already heard the story about how I've had nothing but trouble with this Wi-Fi with a particular router at my parents house. It's a cheap like $20 mid-S router. But when I first got this laptop and I went over there and tried to connect to that router, the router would freak out. It'd bump everybody else off the network. It wouldn't connect reliably. I updated the firmware on the router and that helped a bit. It stopped the problem where it would kick everybody else off the network. But this one still never connected reliably. I did start doing some research online and found out there's a lot of problems with this Intel wireless dual band AC 3165 Wi-Fi. I can find hundreds of messages online with people talking about how unreliable it is, how they have problems connecting to the router or dropping connections. Uh, Dell tech support blames it on the router because this laptop is connected to every other router I tried, although that's only four or five of them, but it has connected to other routers without a problem. But the same can be said for that router. That Midas router has connected to four other laptops, two smartphones, and two tablets with no problem. So I think there's actually some blame to be laid on both sides. There's something that's not quite right with that router, and there's something that's not quite right with this Wi-Fi, and you put the two together, and you get nothing but problems. The easy solution to the problem would probably be to just buy my parents a new router. But I just don't like the idea of having this hanging over me with this Wi-Fi that anytime I, in the future, if I get a new router or go some public Wi-Fi hotspot or something, that it just might refuse to connect just like it does to that NetS router at my parents' house. So I decided to get a new card and for 30 bucks online, I got one with a Qualcomm chipset in it. So we're going to open this thing up and see if I can pop this in and make it work. So normally, the first thing I would do when working on a laptop is to remove the battery. Problem is you can't really do that anymore because the batteries are now inside the system. So I guess we'll just take the cover off and see what's inside. Anytime I'm working on it, something you don't want to get scratched up, of course you want to put down a nice soft cloth on your workbench because you will end up sliding your device around and probably scratching it up somehow. We'll just take out all the screws in this back cover and get inside this thing. So that is 10 screws removed. Of course the back still doesn't come off because it's held on with little snap clips. So in my little kit of tools I have, this thing I got at my local home improvement store for like a buck or something called Smartphone Toolkit. Inside it's got one of these, just a little plastic handle with a kind of a hook piece on the end. You need something like that to get into most electronics these days because you got to get between the layers on the cover here and the system and actually pop these little snap together parts up loose. And you don't want to use just a metal screwdriver for that where you stick it in the crack and twist and because you will end up marring the edge and it will no longer look perfect. So that's the inside. That is the Wi-Fi card over here in the corner. First thing to do is to remove this little screw from this tiny bracket. It holds the end of the card down. I got these nice little plastic trays to hold screws and stuff at the workbench when you're taking stuff apart. When I switch to a different step in the process, I switch to a different tray so you can keep track of what screws go where. So this should just put, lift up and come out. But first, I'll see about popping these little antenna wires off. Not sure how you do that. Okay, they just lift up. Okay. It just comes right out. So here we have the new card. And it doesn't match the old one. Huh, I wonder if that'll work now. This one's got the same end, but it's wider. It's got three more connections. Well, let's pop it in and see if it works. Oh, 
and get the magnifying light down here so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, I got the other card in. It's a smaller card. I'm not sure if that matters or not. I guess we'll power it up and see. <laughs> I'm just going to set this back on the bottom. I'm not going to put all the screws in yet. I can power it up and see how it works. You can see that, but we got the Dale boot logo. Let's see what we got in the network connections. It says Killer Wireless. N-A-A-C. Not connected. New Wi-Fi adapter. I'm going to have to enter my Wi-Fi password again. We will pause the video while I do that. Well, it says it's connected. Ironically, this old adapter is an AC wireless adapter. Like I said, it's an Intel AC3165. I don't even have an AC router. I've got an N router. I've been meaning to maybe upgrade it someday if I really cared about having a faster speed. But this Intel 3165 Wi-Fi has never connected to my Netgear N router at more than 150 megabits. No matter how much I tried to <laughs> change settings and stuff that I probably didn't quite understand anyway. This one, I put it in, booted up. Windows found the driver. Didn't have to install anything. It says Killer Wireless NAAC1525 Wireless. Connected right to my router. And it says right here, 300 megabit per second. So we're off to a good start. Let me fire up Chrome here. I'm going to do a speed test. On speedtest.net, that's not a good test of your Wi-Fi because you're actually testing your internet connection, not your, not the maximum speed of your local Wi-Fi. But it'll give me a good indication if it's working right. <laughs> it's a spectacularly crappy speed, but that's probably my internet right now for some reason. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> I'm supposed to get a hundred megabit internet here, and this came in at six. But I don't think that's the Wi-Fi adapter. I think that's another issue right now. Okay. I hit new server all of a sudden. I get 11 millisecond ping and a 43 megabit, which is still supposed to be 100 to my ISP, but we'll see. So I'm not really testing the uh, Wi-Fi here. I'm just testing my crappy internet. So I need to research some real network speed test tools and try this again. Something that tests my local Wi-Fi network speed, not my internet speed. So I think for now, we are going to put the screws in the back cover of this thing. We'll take it over to my parents' place and see how it behaves with that router it doesn't get along with. And I'm going to keep this card too, just in case. You never know what happens if I change my mind and want to put this thing back the way it was. I do have to give Dale some credit for not whitelisting Wi-Fi adapters in the BIOS like some manufacturers where they put a list in the BIOS of what components are in your computer and when you change them the BIOS objects and just refuses to let you finish booting the system which I think is not a good thing. I think they do it because it limits tech support calls, it limits the amount of hardware they have to train their tech support people to support but it will. It's a good way to make a whole bunch of worthless hardware when things go wrong and in the future you can't get parts to replace parts in your system or you got an issue like this where you just want to change your Wi-Fi or you want to, I don't know, put in a different hard drive or something and then you can't do it because everything's whitelisted and you're stuck having to replace your parts with identical parts which maybe you wouldn't even be able to find in a couple of years. But it looks like Dell doesn't do that. I put this in, it booted right up, it recognized it, Windows recognized it. I didn't even see it do a driver install, it just came up and worked. So there it is, it's all back together. Open this thing up one more time. Ha <laughs> ha, there you go. That's what I like to see for my 100 megabit interconnection. 115 good solid megabits. So I think we're good for now, we'll see how this goes. And I'm going to research better network speed testing tools. So I'm just doing a quick video of the screen on my laptop here because I don't have any software set up right now on this laptop where I can do a direct screen video capture. 
through the uh, magic of video editing and a little bit of just not getting around to getting things done, it's been over a week since I installed this new killer wireless 1525 Wi-Fi card in my Dell laptop. I've taken it over to my parents' place a couple times and it talks to that temperamental Netis router, although maybe not as good as it should. Ha should. It does seem to be a little bit irregular but it does work it works great at home on my netgear wndr 4300 router although again that's only an n router i don't even have an ac router so i can't fully test this but i figured at least i could test whether i could get 300 megabits out of my 300 megabit router and as you can see here it does say it's connected at 300 megabits so I did a little research online on network performance testing tools, and I found this thing called iPerf3. Problem is, I don't want to run it to another Wi-Fi client and have the two both talking over Wi-Fi at the same time. And I also don't have another laptop with Wi-Fi in it that could keep up with this one. So I'm running the iPerf server on an old desktop computer I have it has a gigabit wired ethernet connection to my router so that should give me the best chance at seeing the best performance here when I do this iperf test but I do it with just one client to the server I really don't get all that great of performance not nearly what I was expecting see it comes up here and seems to lurk around 90 megabit per second which isn't all that great for a 300 megabit router but then I noticed that you can do parallel clients with the dash p option and I found that if I load it up with about 25 parallel clients that seems to be get me the maximum bandwidth without going overboard and causing other issues like crashing the iperf server on the other system so we'll fire this off with 25 parallel clients it takes a few seconds to set it up here before it goes screaming away. And what's it doing? Now it's going to prove me wrong and only go to 116. Huh. It was going faster than that before. Let me try that one more time. There we go. Seems to work better on the second shot. So we're getting little pulses there each one around I don't know 200 233 241 megabits averaged out at 236 megabits as sender and 233 as receiver and the windows graph over here kind of agreed with that so I think I'm kind of satisfied with that getting 236 megabits to a 300 megabit router I think is proven that it works pretty good so Maybe someday I'll have an update on this. If I upgrade to an AC router, I can see what this thing can really do. But it looks like it's going to cure my problems with that undesirable Intel 3165 Wi-Fi adapter I took out. So hopefully if you're having issues with that same Wi-Fi card, you can hop online and buy one of these killer wireless cards for about 30 bucks and swap it in and and things will work better for you. That is all for today. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.